The event I'm about to tell you is true, and it really changed my view on online dating and hookups. But here's a little backstory. I'm a 22-year-old female truck driver. I'm also a lesbian. I like my clothes a little baggy, and my hair high and tight. I've been through all sorts of crazy situations in my short lifespan. I've had to pull knives on people to protect myself, and break up fights with fully grown men. I've seen the works. This happened when I was about 18 years old, and I found myself being curious about my sexuality, and wondering how being with a guy would be. I had only been with women up until this point, and I was very single, and very curious, if you know what I mean. To quell my curiosity, I went to the internet and downloaded an app called Meet Me, in search of someone who I might be interested in. There were many creeps, and too many unnecessary pictures, until I came across a guy, let's call him Mike. Me and Mike got to chatting, and he was really cool, chill, and very out there. After a couple of days of talking and getting to know each other, he asked me if we could meet, and of course I said yes. But now that I look back on it, I wish I had never downloaded that app. We arranged to meet at his place to hang out, eat, and play video games. Just have a chill night. I know what you're thinking. What are you doing? Are you dumb? That's how people get kidnapped in movies. You don't know this guy, and you should have met him public. But I was young and curious, so I put all my chips on the table. It was night. I went to his house and it was nice. We talked for a bit, ate some pizza, and after all that, things got pretty heated and we did the dirty. After everything was said and done, we were laying there enjoying each other's company, and I heard a scream. I jumped and said, Mike, I thought you were home alone. What's going on? He said, I am. My brother might have come home and put on a movie. Don't worry, I'll go check it out. I was sitting in his room half naked, trying to get my stuff together just in case something happened, and he came back up. Then Mike came back and said, What are you doing? Why are you getting your stuff? I thought we were having a good time. I had a dumbfounded look on my face. I thought that scream was way too real and too close to be just the TV. So I told him, Oh, I got a text from my dad. I have to get going. He's wondering where I am. And I told him I was on my way back. Oh, okay. Let me walk you out, he said. He walked me out, and I told him good night. You're probably wondering why I didn't call the police. Well, I never had to, until two days later. I saw on the news that good old Mike and his brother had kidnapped, beaten, and starved their stepfather for two weeks. They let him go for a doctor's appointment, and he went straight to the police. That was when they caught them. I started crying right then. That could have been me with that old man. I could have drugged me and tied me up. It could have been a lot worse if I had stayed. So Mike, I hope you're enjoying jail, and I hope you stay there for a long time. I was a regular user of dating apps when I was younger. Thankfully, I don't use them anymore. I actually did eventually end up meeting my wife on OkCupid. Okay but this is about a bad experience I had with someone from Tinder. It was about five years ago, and I was hoping to find love, or at least some kind of meaningful connection. One fateful night, as I swiped through profiles on Tinder, I got a new match. Her name was Emily, and her profile was really interesting. She went to the trouble of actually filling it out, something that I appreciated. Her pictures were also great, but not unbelievable like some of them out there. A lot of them seem fake. I'm sure it's even worse now, but back then it was bad too. I made the first move, and we exchanged a few messages, and quickly hit it off. Emily seemed intelligent, funny, and shared many of my interests. It wasn't long before we decided to meet up in person. She suggested a dive bar in our city that was on the other side of town from me, and I agreed. The day arrived, and I went to the bar feeling a little nervous. She was blonde with green eyes. I scanned the room trying to spot her among the five or ten people in the place. As I turned my head, there she was, standing at the entrance behind me. She looked just like her pictures. I approached her with a smile, and she smiled back. 
Then we got a table and some drinks. The conversation flowed easily, and the connection between us felt genuine. It was like we'd known each other for a long time. I was pretty thrilled that it was going so well. Time slipped away as we laughed, talked, and shared stories. After about an hour, Emily suggested continuing our date at her place. I was taken aback. I have never been the type to do that kind of thing on a first date, but I couldn't pass it up, so I accepted. We left the bar and started walking down the sidewalk. She told me her place was only a 10 minute walk. When we arrived at the apartment, I couldn't help but notice how eerily quiet the building was. It was an older building, probably built in the 70s. The hallways were musty, and it seemed that over half the lights were burnt out. There were stains on the walls, and the carpet on the floor was heavily worn down the center of the hallway. There were several large holes in the carpet as well. It was unsettling, but I couldn't blame Emily for that. It's tough to make rent in the city, and a lot of buildings are substandard. To be honest, mine wasn't much better at the time. I followed her inside, hoping it was nothing. When we entered the apartment, a subtle odor lingered in the air, a scent I couldn't quite place. It was different from the smell in the hall. I figured she had pets. Maybe it was a cat's litter box that needed to be emptied. I was put off by the smell, but it wasn't bad enough that I had to leave. Emily and I sat on the couch in her living room. We opened a bottle of wine and continued talking. Nothing much happened between us right away, but after around half an hour, the door opened. I thought it was a roommate or something. She hadn't even told me if she lived alone. Seconds later, a large man stood in front of the two of us, and he looked angry. He was around my age, but he was six foot four and had a long brown beard and a backwards baseball hat. It wouldn't take a genius to tell who he was. I knew right away that he was her boyfriend. I looked over at Emily, and she was crying. I looked back at the guy, and he was yelling at me to get the F out of there. I didn't waste any time. I got my shoes on and headed for the door. I was gone in less than 10 seconds. I speed walked down the hallway and out the building to the street, looking back every few steps. Nobody followed. I caught the bus home, still shaking from the adrenaline. I couldn't believe what happened. I figured Emily was trying to use me to get back at her boyfriend or make him jealous. She must have planned for him to walk in on us. It was a really dirty move, both for me and for him. There's no telling what that guy could have done to me. In a way, I was lucky that he let me leave. I obviously unmatched Emily and took a long break from dating apps. I really should have reported her for what she did, but I just wanted to be done with it. I never saw or heard from her again, and luckily, all of my following experiences with dating apps have been really positive. Back in early 2017, I was on a few of the big dating apps. I was focused mainly on Tinder at the time. After a series of mediocre dates, I was almost ready to throw in the towel. But then I got a pretty promising match. Her name was Lila. Her bio caught my attention as soon as I saw it, and when I swiped right, I was really hoping that we would match. From what I could tell, she seemed like a fun and interesting person. To my surprise, we actually matched. After a few initial messages, our conversation flowed effortlessly. We had more than a few things in common, and really seemed to be hitting it off. We decided to have our first date at a local park, and we could decide what to do together. When the day of our meeting arrived, I sent her a message to confirm. She answered right away, and assured me that she would meet me there at 7.30. There was a big gate at the front of the park, and that was the spot where we would meet. I headed there and got to the gate, scanning the faces in the crowd, hoping to catch a glimpse of Lila. Just when I was about to message her, my phone buzzed with a notification. It was Lila, requesting that we meet at a different spot a few blocks away. It was just a street corner. I didn't know why she would want to do that. If she was a few blocks away, then why not just come and meet me? I agreed anyway and started walking. It would only take a few minutes. As I walked towards the new location, anticipation grew inside me. 
I wasn't worried about the sudden change of plans. I thought she had just found a good spot. However, as soon as I reached the corner where we were set to meet, another message from Lila appeared on my screen. She suggested meeting at a different place, farther away this time. Despite the inconvenience, I really wanted to meet her, so I agreed and went along with it. Upon arriving at the third location, a strange feeling hit me. It was basically an alley between two apartment buildings. There were no other people around that I could see. That place had trouble written all over it. Instinctively, I knew something wasn't quite right, but I walked around for a while anyway. I was too curious not to find out what was going on. By this point, I was pretty much 50-50 on Lila being real, but I couldn't let it go. Not smart, I know. Suddenly I noticed two men walking towards me from the other side. They were wearing dark clothes, jeans, and black hoodies. They also both wore surgical masks and sunglasses. I turned to run in the opposite direction, and then I saw another large man approaching from that way, effectively blocking me into the alley. He looked the same as the others, only bigger. I scurried around to find a way out. The only option was a door on one of the buildings, but it was locked. I shook the handle for a few seconds, and then turned around. I was surrounded. The three men stood in front of me, not moving. Then one of them said, We're Lila. I think you know what this is. Wallet and phone now. I looked at them holding back tears. I felt so stupid. Even though I knew something was wrong, I went for it anyway. I didn't bother trying to plead with the men. I just handed them my wallet and phone. Before they walked away, one of them told me they'd kill me if I called the police. The scary thing is that I believed them. After they were gone, I cautiously walked back out to the street. It was dark by then. I looked around scanning the street for those men. I didn't want to run into them again. When I was sure they were gone, I walked home, looking over my shoulder the whole way. When I got home, I contemplated calling the police, but that threat from one of the guys really scared me. I was also feeling embarrassed. I wanted nothing more than to put the whole thing behind me. Looking back, I know I should have reported it in order to warn others, but that's not what I did. In fact, I never told anybody about it until now. It feels really good to finally get it out. I was almost 23 when this started. Just pointing out now, I used to be a very different person. I've learned to be less stubborn. I met this man online when I was 22 years old. We'll call him Dude. Dude was 40 when we started talking. It never clicked to me back then that at his age, he shouldn't be as unique as he was. I thought he was pretty awesome at the time though. We were instantly best friends. That's at least how I felt. He listened and would tell me random stories. The way he worded things was always weird. He'd talk like we were in a live action Dungeons and Dragons game. We messaged every day. I was in a relationship at the time, and he even made friends with my then boyfriend. Then we stopped talking for about a year. He texted me one day out of the blue and said he'd lost all his contacts except mine for some reason. He sent me a picture of my contact on his phone. It was a photo that I had sent him, but I overlooked it at the time. It was like our friendship resumed where it left off. He was now going through a divorce, and I was his supportive friend. Those were his words. He told me there were lines he didn't want to cross, and soon we began talking on the phone. Normal conversations. He started hinting at wanting me to help him tail his soon-to-be ex-wife, because she wouldn't know me. He was too curious to know who she was living with. That was red flag number one that I actually recognized as a red flag. Someone else told me that he was crazy and to stay away. So what did I do? I continued talking to Dude just because I was told not to. Again, he said there were lines he didn't want to cross. Red flag number two is religion, Scientology. He never pressured me to join, but he'd always want me to come for moral support, for audits and such things. I always declined. Again, my friend told me to stay away, but I didn't listen. 
Soon, dude wanted to hang out. I tried to decline as politely as possible, making excuses like that I was busy. But eventually I gave in. I sent him the address of where I was. I want to point out again that this man said we were friends and there were lines that he didn't want to cross. I didn't either, but I meant it. He didn't. He pulled up to my place on his moped. I'm five foot seven, and this now 42 year old man was an entire foot shorter than me. The first thing he did was stick his tongue in my mouth. When I got out of this unwanted kiss, he looked at me, felt my face, and said, I just wanted to make sure you were real. Because me sitting on the driveway in front of you is totally not proof enough. I was super uncomfortable. But since I was at my parents' house, I was okay. He tried to get me to ride his moped with him, and declined over and over. My little sister came out. She was 17 at the time. He became friendly with her, and instantly wanted to take her for a ride. She agreed, so he drove her around the neighborhood and brought her back. Then I decided it was time for him to leave. We still talked, and he started to become very possessive even though I was still in a relationship with someone else at that point. Then he started asking for my 17-year-old sister's number and talking about what he wanted to do to the both of us. I really wanted to stop talking to that guy, but by then I was too scared because I gave him my address and he knew where my little sister slept. Finally, after he blew up my phone for days with me responding maybe every 20 texts, I finally just blocked him. Then he started texting my boyfriend and asking where I was. He was asking for my little sister's number. He said that I was going to give it to him and forgot. A total lie. With the text app I used to have, if you block someone, you could still see the messages. You just didn't get notifications and they didn't show up in your normal text folder. He sent me two 15 page texts, one in English and the other in Spanish. He continued to keep spamming mine and my now ex's phone for months. Eventually, he finally just disappeared. I'm 28 now, and luckily I still haven't heard from him. I have totally decided that red flags are red flags for a reason, and if your gut tells you to stay away, you should do it.